Thank you. Um, I'd like to, to start uh, congr congratulating uh, O2 on Campus Party for such a great organization. I'm sure it's hard work and you're doing a great job. And also thank them because um, for me this is a huge opportunity to be here today. Um, I just want to tell you about, uh, about myself a little bit. And for that I want to back up uh, to when I was little uh, because I had a great influence from my parents um, that taught me uh, a lot about technology. They're both uh, telecommunications engineers. My grandfather is also a telecommunications engineer. And all we, we spoke at home uh, when we were having dinner is um, about technology, telecommunications, mobile applications. And you can imagine that's a huge influence for a kid. Um, and also, on the other hand, the, um, they, they taught me on the value of music and how you can appreciate good music. And uh, I started taking piano lessons when I was really small. Uh, I became a lousy, self-taught guitar player. And I also uh, ha um, had some drum lessons. I became a drummer uh, real soon. I had a, a, a music band, uh, although we didn't achieve any success, but it was fun. And those are my, my two passions. So wh why I wanted to start uh, talking about them is um, because um, one of the things I've, I've been able to do is uh, I, I decided I wanted to work in, in one of these two passions all the time. And that's one of the first things I've learned is that to, to love what you do and do what you love because it's uh, really important to, to for this for an entrepreneur. Um, you, you're here in Campus Party. You, you, if you go to any other, uh, any other of the speakers, they, they'll tell their experience and they all have something in common. And it's that an entrepreneur needs, needs passion to, to, uh, to do his, uh, his job. Because um, that's the main, the main reason that's, that's going to differentiate an entrepreneur from a, from a casual worker. Uh, a casual worker needs motivation to do his job because he's not really, uh, he doesn't really want to do it. And on the other hand, an entrepreneur needs passion because uh, you really want to do that, you love what you do, and you, you're willing to, to make your dreams come true. It's a big help uh, because you're gonna, you're gonna face some rough moments. Uh, some, sometimes everything's going to go uh, to rubbish and you don't know what to do next. Uh, and that passion is what's going to help you uh, make your dreams come true. Um, now I can say, hi, I'm Luis. I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, um, I, I studied telecommunications engineer because my parents uh, um, taught me the importance of, the, of technology. Uh, I specialized in innovation management and entrepreneurship. And um, I started Hifley uh, that brings the jukebox to a smartphone. And it's a dream for me having this job because uh, I bring my two passions together with uh, music and technology. And that's why uh, you'll be seeing today some album covers while I'm uh, sharing with you some things I, I found important in my, in my short career. Um, how did we start the idea? Well, um, uh, in October 2012, uh, I joined with some friends uh, from college and from, I'm from school. And we, we started building an app that uh, would allow you to uh, join the VIP list of clubs so that you'd get discounts, you'd get offers to, to, to get into the club, to, to, to go to the disco. Um, and one, one night we were discussing future developments for the app and one of the first one that came up was of course uh, um, asking for the drinks directly from your smartphone. But the, the other one was uh, what if you could choose the music? And we started to think about it, we, we saw that that could be really cool. But we said, eh, let's leave it for later. And that's another thing I've learned. Never lose an idea, because um, people think that entrepreneurs uh, will just click their fingers and come up with the next big thing, and they, ju they just know what they're doing. And it's, it's never like that. You always have an idea. You have to work on it. You, um, I, what I usually do is uh, that I write down the idea. Uh, I go back to it and, and start working on it, uh, and, um, writing down things I, I can come up with uh, related to that idea. And in the end, it's just, um, it's just working over the same concept because uh, any change on the market on the technology can, can change your perception on an idea that you once thought was for later. And now it comes up uh, as your, your dream job. Um, and also, that part of the evolution of an idea comes when you share the idea with people. Because uh, 
most of most of the people I've I've met all over my life um, were scared of sharing their idea. They were like, oh, "What if they copy me?" Don't worry, <laughs> they can copy your idea, but they won't copy your passion and and your effort, your your attitude um, to do that idea because uh, it's going to be your thing and not theirs. And also, competitors are good because that means that there's a huge opportunity behind that. And if, if no one wants to do something, why would you want to do it? That, that probably means that there's not an opportunity over there. So it doesn't make any sense to go that way. So don't worry about that. Um, harness uh, competitors, because that's a good thing for you. And um, just keep on working with, uh, with that passion that you need. But of course, it's not all passion, 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 OK? Uh, make that clear, but uh, it's also about hard work, uh, effort, and, um, and persistence, uh, really pushing over to, to keep your idea moving forward. Um, but for that, one of the things you need is a good foundation. That's why um, I became a telecom engineer. Uh, I studied um, uh, an MBA in entrepreneurship. And it's, it's really good to start knowing about your field, about entrepreneurship, but um, it's, it's all theoretical. Uh, one of the things about becoming an entrepreneur is that you really need to get, to get your hands dirty. So that's why I started a couple of projects before launching Hiveplay. And um, I also started um, in Satellite Entrepreneurs, which is a, a school organization that is going to help uh, other college students. In fact, I'm seeing the president for next year. <laughs> um, that's going to help other college students to start their own dream. Cause, uh, it's fun to start your own startup, but um, it's even better when you can help with your knowledge others. And for that, it's also really important that you keep, um, keep training your brain. Um, it's all a mixture of, of that passion, the knowledge you get, and the constant effort and hard work you're going to make to, to have all the knowledge that you need for that. Because, um, for example, it's key to know your market. Uh, in our case, um, Knowing how music in the music industry works and how author rights work is really important. Um, one of the things we did is that we created connections with those actors uh, really soon. Because you would think that they want the things they way. That, um, I mean, it's a, it's a mature market. They would like the things to continue the way they're going. But in fact, you get surprised because they're looking forward to, to knowing about new, new business opportunities, new business models, and they can't even suppose a big help. So that's why you have to work on your network. Um, most people uh, know that there are part-time jobs, full-time jobs, but there are other kind of jobs that's all day long job, which is an entrepreneur. You have to be working 24-7, uh, uh, be prepared to tell your idea to anyone, um, and any, anywhere, anytime, you, a good thing to do is to carry business cards all the time. And um, uh, in fact, uh, for example, in Hiveplay, what we used to do when we had a networking event, we would um, challenge ourselves to see who got the, the most business cards from others. Because Network is value for your company, and that's, a w that's one of the most valuable things because knowing the key people is going to be really important in the success of a startup. Uh, but of course, you need a great pitch. And uh, the greatest pitches are simple, are like this cover, plain black. Um, you, don't need, you, not, you don't need in one minute in your later pitch to convince an investor to invest in you or a worker to, to work for you. Um, you, need, you need to generate a certain amount of doubt so as they can, they can see that there's a new opportunity of, uh, behind that. Um, what should an elevator pitch include? Well, um, what do you do, who you are, uh, why you're the best for doing that, and of course, what do you need from, from that people or that audience? Uh, but also you have to include um, you, name, you have to name your startup several times. You need to name the problem, the solution, the value of your, mar the value of your solution, the market size, milestones you've achieved, your, your track, how many uses do you have, uh, team, is your team the best team? And all of that, you have to do it in one minute. So you, one of the things we get clear from this is that we really need to work on our pitches. It's not, uh, we, we, 
we really should be able to, to tell uh, an investor or anyone in the world uh, that what do we do in, in one minute. For that, of course, I also came to talk about my startup and I'm going to do my elevator pitch. I'm sorry, I'm waiting for the elevator. <laughs> okay, um, hi, I'm Luis, I'm CEO and co-founder of Fiveplay. And uh, we're setting the next step in the evolution of music by bringing the jukebox to a smartphone. Because let me ask you, how many times have you gone into a bar or a pub and you just hate the music that's playing there? There's nothing you can do also. And venues spend almost 2 billion, years, two billion euros a year um, in their music so that they, their customers are comfortable. Well, don't worry, because Hiveplay is a background music service for venues that allows their customers to choose and to pick and vote the music they're going to listen at this, uh, these venues. Uh, we have 40 venues, 3,000 3, users that spend up to 12 minutes in, a hive, in hive play whenever they are at a hive play bar. And um, we are looking for opportunities in the UK, so if you know anyone that, uh, uh, that could be interested in talking with us, just let me know at the end of the session. That's how you do a pitch. <laughs> okay. Um, now let me talk a little bit more about Hive Play, because uh, I don't have one minute. I have 45, so I can say whatever I want. <laughs> um, how do we do this? Well, uh, for starters, um, for the venue, we have a, a music software that they can download. Uh, they can choose the playlist that they want, to, to, they want people to listen to in the venue. So it's a classical background music service. And um, the thing is that we create the, the music playlist. They, we, we, update that, we update them with um, whatever we, we like or whatever we see is a huge opportunity. Um, but also, we have a TV system where anyone can see the songs that are being voted right now or even um, a Twitter feed. So anyone can send a message to the, to the TV screen. And then it's all done by the user with, with a smartphone app. You just check into the venue. Um, you pick the song you want to listen to. You can even search it in, in the catalog. And um, after that, everyone votes. So the most voted song is the one that's going to be played next. If your song isn't getting picked, you just have to keep on voting. But be careful, because this is real fun. But it's also really addictive, as we've seen in some of the places that are using our, our app. Um, we started in April 2012. Uh, I pulled a team together of three developers um, and one lawyer and myself. And um, we applied to, to Waira, which is the Telefonica Startup Accelerator program in Europe. Um, uh, it was a tough, uh, a tough selection process. Uh, we had like uh, 500 startups uh, competing against us, then 40, then 20, and we finally got through. Um, and it's, it's really hard to, to get chosen for one part. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's a huge success. You feel like you've scored a uh, goal in the final Champions League. Um, but on the other hand, you've met some great people with awesome projects that they, they're not going to get through. And that's kind of, it kind of sucks, <laughs> if I can say it, uh, because uh, you, you've, know, you've, no, you've met them and, and it's uh, tough for them too. Um, so we were in the final, my PC died while I was presenting, I got uh, no slides, uh, we continued, we entered. And one of the things we did is uh, to talk to the jury afterwards to see what have we done good, what have we done wrong, what we did right. Um, and the thing is that most of them agreed that uh, one thing is that we had a great team. Uh, but what does a great team mean? Uh, well, for once, Everyone needs to have the same passion and, and be clear about the goal uh, that we all, we all wanted to achieve. Um, you need complementary skills because, I mean, um, you can't make a band with three drummers. You need a drummer, a bass guitar, a bass uh, guitar player, and a lead vocal. You need uh, skills that, um, that can help each other in different, in different aspects of the, of the business. And the other one is uh, that uh, th that's uh, just one, one of my perspectives about uh, the relationship you should have with co-founders. Uh, I found that if, if you're going to start up with a friend, uh, one of the things you should do is, that, is to leave every aspect real clear. Um, I mean, 
what's going to happen if in the middle of uh, our journey I get called by Google? Can I go? Uh, what's going to happen with my shares? Uh, this kind of stuff is, is uh, real tricky and, and you should leave all, all these things tied up because uh, you don't want to lose a friend. You just want to, to create a business and, and hopefully succeed on it. Um, I found that the best relationship status you can have with someone that you're going to start up is um, someone who you'd like to go have a beer, but you won't tell him about your girlfriend. I don't know if you get what kind of uh, relationship I'm talking about, but it's, it's a ter certainly the best relationship status to, to have with a co-founder so that you're comfortable with them, but, um, but uh, you're not going to lose a friend if you, don't, if you fail. Um, and the other reason they, they thought that we were good is because we had an agreement with uh, Telefonica on the spot, which is the background music service of Telefonica. Um, this partnership included that we were going to build our solution on their music service. They're a great team of developers and marketers uh, that have their service in 45,000 venues all over the world. And uh, we didn't have to worry about author rights or the music database because we were going to do it all with them. Thing is, six months later, uh, we saw that we needed to control the core of our business because um, I mean, if something went wrong, we didn't know which fault it was. We had to get the two teams together to, to uh, fix any problem. And that is why I learned that uh, partners are good, but leave, it for, leave them for later. Uh, startup, try to create a product that's uh, valuable for your clients. Um, and once you have a proven business model, then you can start thinking about partnering with other, with other companies because it's going to be consuming. It's going to take a lot of your time. Sometimes it's going to be really frustrating to not get whose fault is, uh, any, is any of the problems. And um, the other thing is that when you are creating a product on your own, all the blame is on you, even if it's a failure, if it's a success, and you can control the, the product end to end. And that is um, real good because you, uh, you can move forward faster. All of this we did uh, one month before uh, the demo day of Wara, as uh, every startup accelerator program, at the end of, uh, of six months, there's uh, an event for investors and press to come and see what startups are doing. And um, we did really good, uh, even though it was just one month to, to show uh, our product working in an environment that we have developed our own mu music player in just two months. Um, we told a good story and we succeeded. We got some interest from, from investors because uh, we didn't focus on the demo day. We focused on what we needed to do, which is which was uh, create a product and sell it to, to the business. Um, and that's why I learned that you need laser focus in what you do. But at the same time, and that's why you have the rainbow, <laughs> is that you need a lighthouse to see everything that's going to come. Uh, you need to be aware of investors, of market changes, of other startups, other competitors that you're going to have. And it's, it's, uh, it's something really difficult to do, to be focused on what you need to do and also be aware of everything that's happening in your environment. Um, to this day, we have 40 venues, 3,000 users. Uh, they spend a lot of time in, in, in high play when they are at a venue with, with our service. And we have paying customers, so we did really good for that. Um, but we spotted a great opportunity. Uh, we want to launch in the UK. And um, uh, we, we saw this a great opportunity because uh, there's great people here that uh, have a great passion for, for, for music and uh, they love apps. They, well, they love apps. You love apps. You, <laughs> uh, you love going out and, and drinking beer. And, um, well, you know, if you, if you think that uh, this can be a good, a good opportunity for us, just uh, let us know uh, and, and contact us if, if uh, you can put us in contact with someone interesting. Uh, I'm just going to finish now and you can start asking me questions because I know it was kind of um, a chaos what I did today. Um, I found really useful uh, to, from time to time, stop and think on what you're doing to evaluate uh, if, if your path is good, if, if, if 
uh, what you've achieved, what, what you should be doing in the next uh, couple of months. Um, because sometimes you get almost all the, of the, of the pieces of the puzzle together. And uh, uh, I want to help, uh, I want to thank you all for coming today because uh, you really helped me doing this exercise again for Campus Party. And um, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Would it be possible to explain a little bit more how the whole app works in uh, in the pub and also how the selection of the songs? Okay. Um, sure. Uh, for for once, the venue has a needs a PC and a DSL connection. They can download our software and choose the music playlist that they want to listen to. And then there's a, an iOS and Android app at the moment for the users. Um, they can enter the venue. They can check in as they would do with, with Foursquare. Then you can pick the song uh, that you want to listen to. It's added to a queue. And in that same queue, you're going to be voting to see which is the next song that's going to be played. That's all for now. I mean, we will do more things. Like, you will be able to share your songs. Uh, you will have uh, a lot of things that you, you will do in the app. Um, we are preparing uh, another platform for radios that we hope to launch at the end of September in Spain so that you can be in high play at home and still interact both with, uh, with the radio speaker. Sorry, but uh, did you did you already talk? Did you already talk? How would you think to make money with this app? Um, business model. Yeah, I forgot to say that. Thank you. Um, we charge the venue a monthly fee for this service, and right now in Spain we are not charging the users to use the application. Either if it's uh, adding a song to the queue or voting, uh, we found that um, at least in Spain. People are not yet comfortable with mobile payments, and this was a wiser way to go because uh, we could we are getting more users uh, the, instead of making them pay for for uh, for the music selection. Uh, if you think this like a multi-platform, from you have like a two users, like a users or and clients. Clients could be like uh, the, the bar, the, the, the pub, and the clients, uh, the user will be the people who is drinking the beer. So maybe uh, the bar could have paid for you uh, for using the application. Meanwhile, the users could be using this uh, application for free. That's like a quite good suggestion. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's how it that that's how the the business model is, is working right now in Spain. Um, although we've we've seen that uh, in some countries, uh, for example, we have a competitor in the U.S. and they're doing it. Um, they charge the venue a monthly fee, but still they can get some earnings from that platform because users have to pay every time they they sell, they choose a song. Not for the voting, but but you have to pay if you want to add a song to the queue. So uh, we want to, to test if that model is, um, is, uh, can, can be profitable in Spain. But we don't want to do it yet because uh, we still are growing in, in uh, the user da database. I don't know if uh, you thought about uh, what I'm questioning. Um, for uh, pubs, uh, usually, came inside the pubs uh, some kind of people who listen some kind of music uh, and do you thought about uh, um, how to moderate the queue list uh, uh, about rock uh, because sometimes uh, there can be I don't know in Italy I'm Italian there can be places where um, few people most of the people come into a pubs uh, and uh, want to listen some kind of music than other mm. than other music uh, yeah we thought of, of doing that like the 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 people going to the venue creating the music list. But we 
if you think it from a user perspective, that's that's way cooler and that's uh, what anyone would would like. But uh, in our model right now, the one that the 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 one that pays is the venue owner, and they prefer to differentiate themselves from other venues by choosing this, the music that's going to be played in their venue. So they don't want, uh, I don't know, if it's a if it's a pub here in London, they won't like uh, flamenco playing. <laughs> but at some point, with with that model, it could happen. And the thing is, the venue that's the one that that's paying right now uh, don't doesn't want that. Maybe in the future we can we can see if uh, we can work out some some way so that if you pay a lot of money, you can put flamenco in an, in a pub here in London. But Right now, the model is uh, working this way because it's the easiest way for everyone. Any more questions, guys? No? Well, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Alvarez. Thanks, thank guys, for coming.